Most news from Southeast Asia. Good morning. This is Arlene, and you're listening to Duran ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. On our very beautiful Monday morning, we are going to share with you interesting news from all over Southeast Asia as well as the global world. First of all, breaking news: Nepal's President Yadav approved secular. Constitution. Nepal has formally adopted a new constitution nearly a decade after the country ended a long-running civil war. Earlier on Sunday, police fired on protesters in the south, where some members of ethnic minorities opposed the constitution. At least. One person died. The document defines the majority Hindu nation as a secular republic divided into seven federal provinces. It was agreed by parliament last week. After years of political wrangling, members of parliament applauded as President Rambayram Yadav signed the document in the capital Kathmandu. On the other hand, you have、uh, news from Malaysia. So the FBI is currently launching an investigation into the Malaysian state fund, one MDB. The U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, or short for FBI, has launched the investigation into the alle- allegation of money laundering at the Trouble Malaysian State Fund One MDB. Neither the FBI nor the One MDB responded to a request for comment. The reported FBI investigation comes shortly after a former member of Malaysia's ruling party was arrested. Just before traveling to the United States, where he planned to make a police complaint and urge the U.S. authorities to look into the allegations of money laundering at the One MDB. A series of international investigations are underway as the scandal surrounding the fund widens. Swiss authorities also said that this month they have frozen funds in Swiss banks. I mean, investigations into One MDB. Hong Kong authorities also said they were investigating a complaint related to the firm. Both anti-government and pro-government protesters have taken to the streets in the recent weeks. Uh, namely the Bursa rally as well as the Red Rally, the Ratchet Rally. It, it is meant to see,、uh, to raise concern about the political instability of this country. And on the other hand, moving on to Thailand, Thai activists plan to defy junta ban with more marches. A group of pro-democracy activists said on Sunday that they plan more marches after staging the largest political demonstrations in Thailand's capital since military government took power in May 2014. Another protest would set up a flashpoint with a junta that is considering taking action against the organizers of the hundreds of people who defy government orders march on Bangkok's democracy monument two days ago. They are scared, but they will, but they will not be backing down, and they will keep on fighting because they want Thailand to become a democratic country. This is according to one of the protesters, Rang Siman,、uh, and the group has permission to hold a forum at the university on Saturday, but not to march beyond the walls. It is unclear why the authorities allowed the march to proceed. Protesters at many smaller gatherings have been detained by a government that has previously. Brook no public show of dissent. The junta of coup leader and prime minister Prayut Chan-o-cha has banned political gatherings of more than five people and has summoned hundreds of activists for questioning. 
Moving on to Laos, uh, it is to receive technical training from Chinese on proposed high-speed railway. Again, another Chinese investment. Uh, Chinese railway experts are providing technical training this month for Lao officials in charge of the uh, U.S. 7 billion high-speed railway project that will link the two neighboring countries and extend to Thailand. The training comes the same month as the Minister of Public Works and Transport issue a notice to foreign and Lao companies with operations in the capital Vientiane and the provinces to submit bids for building in the Lao Chinese railway projects. Vientiane and the provinces had immediately funds and vehicles necessary to start the project. The September 7 notice said that eligible companies must be a member of the Lao National Construction Association, although firms that are not members can apply to join if they meet the organization's criteria. Afterwards, they will be able to submit a bid. In the Public Works and Transport Department of Northern Lao Luang Namta Province, through which the planned railway will pass, issued a notice on Tuesday last week informing local companies about submitting bids for the projects. Moving on to its neighbor, Vietnam, freeze anti-state blogger U.S. calls for more releases. So Vietnam has released a high-profile blogger who has traveled to the United States. The American embassy said last uh, yesterday, in fact, but a human rights group say that the move extended a cynical practice by Hanoi to send its critics into exile. They welcomed the decision by the Vietnamese authorities to release Ta Pong Tan, who decided to travel to the United States after her release from prison. This is according to the public affairs officer Terry White at the United States Embassy in Hanoi. White called on Hanoi to release other political prisoners, saying Vietnamese should be allowed to express their political views without fear of retribution. The Vietnamese government did not make any statement on Tan's release. The popularity of political blogs has grown with increasing internet usage in Vietnam and simmering discontent over communist government's handling of the economy and rampant graft. There are still other bloggers in jail because of dissent, so let's not be too optimistic with this one release of a Vietnamese blogger. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll discuss more on the economic side of Southeast Asia. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hey, welcome back. This is Arlene from the ASEAN Daily, where I'll bring you news and commentaries on Southeast Asia. So, moving on to our economic side of Southeast Asian uh, news. Report denounces growing illegal Myanmar-China timber trade. Illegal timber is increasingly flowing out of Myanmar to China as loggers push deeper into the poor Southeast Asian nation, stripping its forests, an environmental group has alleged. In a report published on Thursday, the London-based Environmental Investigation Agency, short for EIA, has called on both governments to stop the trade worth hundreds of millions of dollars a year that is reducing Myanmar's forests and supplies, China's wood processing industry, which makes furniture for domestic and international markets. The non-governmental organization said Chinese businesses acquire the rights to illegal lock mountains, paying off corrupt officials in gold bars and bribing armed groups and the military to pass through checkpoints. The logging is done by poor Chinese villagers. Dozens of them were convicted earlier this year following raids by Myanmar authorities. 
but the shadowy kingpins who organize the trade and reap the profits remain untouched. This is according to the report. On the other hand, India and Laos agree direct flights, which is a great thing, right? The government of India and Laos have signed a new agreement that paved the way for direct flights between the two countries. The Hindu reports that the Memorandum of Understanding Pan on Friday will enable airlines of both countries to operate direct flights. And according to Anil Wadu, what do Wa, the Indian's Minister of External Affairs, reported saying that an airlines would now explore the possibility of new routes. And he said that he thinks there will be more demand from Lao travelers who want to go into the Buddhist area, especially Bodh Gaya and New Delhi. And this is according to Wadawa, the minister's secretary for Eastern Regions. Lao Airlines would be seriously looking at the proposition in the coming days. They will also be exploring this with uh, their own airline in the future. He also added that the Indian government would be taking, uh, sorry, would be talking to Air India and private Indian carriers about the plan. Moving on to the social culture news after this music. ASEAN Dailies First and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back. This is Arlene. You're listening to the ASEAN Daily. Back to our social cultural news. Do you know that Cambodia has selected its movie, The Last, the Last Reel, for foreign language Oscar contention? And Cambodia named The Last Reel by Soto Kulikar as its candidate for the Foreign Language Academy Award race. That's amazing. And the movie... It's actually about a lost film buried under the country's killing fields and the different versions of the truth that it reveals was selected by the Cambodia Oscar Selection Committee. The other film submitted to the committee was uh, Chahe Boras 3.50, a drama about the trade in virgins. In 2014, Cambodia did not select a candidate movie. The last reel is now on commercial release, having had festival presentations over the past year at Tokyo and Udin. I wonder if they have the last reel in other ASEAN countries. It would be interesting to view such amazing movie made by local director from Cambodia. On the other hand, some interesting news uh, about the Nobel Prize. Well, it's not exactly a Nobel Prize. It's called the Ik Nobel Prize. So apparently, uh, there's this universal urination duration wins the Ik Nobel Prize. A study showing that nearly all mammals take the same amount of time to re urinate has been awarded one of the 2015 Ik Nobel Prizes at Harvard University. Well, it's actually a spoof Nobels for improbable research and it's at their 25th years. Oh, this has been quite some time ago. The team behind the urination research from George, Georgia Tech won the physics ick using high-speed video analysis. They modeled the fluid dynamics involved in urination and discovered that all mammals weighing more than 3 kilograms emptied their bladders over about 21 seconds. That's amazing. <laughs> and their subjects include rats, goats, cows, and elephants. Although the findings reveal a remarkably consistent scaling law in bigger bees, they also emphasize that um, small animals do things quite differently. Rats can urinate in a fraction of a second, for example. This might make Rodin a poor choice for studying urinary health problems. And they don't have a proper animal model for urinary system research. According to the study's lead author, Patricia Young, a PhD student in mechanical engineering. 
And on the other hand, uh, run by the Science Humor magazine, Annals of Improbable Research. This is a jubilantly irrelevant affair. It has become world famous for recognizing scientific achievements that make people laugh, actually, than think. Uh, this year's eight winners traveled from six continents to accept their trophies. The triumphant research include a chemical re recipe to partially unboil an egg. I wonder how to do that. And the discovery that the word huh occurs in every human language. Wow, I didn't know about it. Another recipient, Michael Smith from Cornell University, ranked the pain of bee stings on different parts of the body by orchestrating repeated stings to the four corners of his own anatomy. Well, he must have a really superb body to be able to withstand those pains. And uh, another person, Mark Abrahams, uh, Abrahams, Sorry, the Ike Nobles founder and evening master of ceremonies closed the event with his customary punchline. If you didn't win an Ike Nobel Prize tonight, and especially if you did, better luck next year. And this are all our news for today. Uh, you can catch more news about the Ike Nobel Prize. A Nobel Prizes by just googling about it. There's a lot of interesting, uh, event, <laughs> interesting discoveries besides the ones that I mentioned just now. Oh, another one that I need to mention is on the list of economic Nobel Prize winner, the Bangkok Metropolitan Police in Thailand actually offered to pay policemen extra cash if the policemen refused to take bribes. And actually, it helped to reduce bribe, surprisingly. Huh? Uh, that's all for our news today. Uh, you can catch us more on durianasean.com for all our latest podcasts and news and videos. And you can always uh, go to our social media site at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to get the latest updates from us in terms of news and ASEAN and even social cultural. And yes, if you are on the go with your mobile phone, just download our app Durian ASEAN and listen to, your, uh, to Durian ASEAN anywhere, everywhere you go.